Watch that. Watch this. Well, what do you mean by this? Oh, well, this is my channel. Welcome to it. And if you guys do really enjoy it, you can go in, you can click the share button. That really, really helps the algorithm go to Twitter, Facebook, Blogger. I don't even know what the crap that is. Reddit, all the stuff. So if you do love that, we also have a join button. You go in, you click the little join button. Four ninety nine a month, you get all the cool, awesome emojis. Now, enjoy the video. Some people are flipping and flopping on Disney Star Wars. It's like they don't believe anything that they talk about. Hello everyone, I am MechaRandom42, the one, the only, the original, your favorite YouTube consumer advocate, Harpy, oh yes. And we are talking today about Disney Star Wars, John Boyega in particular, and we all know he has recently called out Disney, especially Disney Star Wars and Lucasfilm and everybody involved in the executive levels for reducing his character to blatant tokenism. Well, I find it funny how some article writers went from defending films like The Last Jedi because wah, diversity, wah, 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 and flip-flopped back over now that John Boyega's called this stuff out. See, they like to say, don't like diversity in our Star Wars movies. Don't see The Last Jedi. All right. Well, it's not the diversity we really have a problem with. We don't like it when characters that are brought in for representation are just used as a token, as a little bit of a checkbox in your giant game of... Wokemon. Wokemon. And you just add another one to the Wokedex. So you've got one of this and one of this and one of every color of the rainbow to prove to the other studios that you're not is some phobes. Well, this writer for Wired back in 2017 with The Last Jedi was part of the media that was trying to paint this narrative that people who didn't like The Last Jedi were just is some phobes with this whole don't like diversity, don't say it. There's a scene in Star Wars The Last Jedi, I won't say much, but you'll see it yourself, where a young, well, it, sh she's actually an alien. Did you, did you not realize that um, this is a long, long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far, far away? It has absolutely nothing to do with human Earth countries continents and it's kind of actually a little bit ist to insert human stereo well look at what happens when they talk about orcs in D&D &D, for example to have those sort of allegories in things that are completely unrelated is now considered ist so to have this in an alien well that's really not how I want humanity to uh, be when we actually do finally signal the aliens. What are they? Why are they? What do they mean? I would much rather have a united planet that can Realize we do have some superficial differences, but we are all the same. We all have fears, hopes, needs. We all laugh. We all eat. We all sleep. We all make mistakes. And lately, people aren't really allowed to. Well, this writer is, I guess, getting called out for making a big mistake. She's not going to admit it, however. She'll probably pretend this doesn't exist. And she did not write that article where she did kind of call everybody ists and phobes. John Boyega is right about Star Wars. The actor's criticism of how the franchise treated characters of color is obvious to those, to wa to those who watch the trilogy. Oh, except her. Except her, for example. Because a few years ago, she says it's a very sweet moment. It's a hero moment, but it's also an important one. It called out its significance for fans of color. What? To be reduced to token? You're finally realizing this because this was all the problem. Representation matters. She woke up the next morning to a stream of mentions telling her to stop making everything about race. To reply, I hope you all, all enjoy the new Star Wars. The implication was obvious. They won't. The Last Jedi isn't here to appease the old guard. But when you do make it all about that, you do just reduce it to the tokenism. You only have it for that reason. 
And there are ways to actually represent. So, like, they're talking about Rose Tico, for example, here. There is a way, but putting her in an alien movie about aliens in a galaxy far, far away a very long time ago is kind of odd. And it is ist in itself, isn't it? But these people don't seem to understand that. But, you know, of course, John Boyega says it's right. So, of course, Angela here probably isn't going to have the stones to go against what John Boyega says, because why would you? Why would you? He's very entitled to his opinion, because how else would anyone know what he goes through other than himself, right? He knows his own experiences, dealing with issues of how he looks on the outside, where he's from, how he grew up, how people perceive him, and I just see him as the really cool guy who got the short end of the deal, as Finn, because that was going to be such an awesome character, wasn't it? That was going to be the character. How cool would have that been if you have a stormtrooper who's like, oh, I'm fighting on the wrong side and I need to go over to the good guys because the good guys are actually against this tyranny and against this force of will, as it were. How cool would have that been? Oh, but no, they just wasted him and made him the comic relief for no reason. And he goes on to say, Disney did not bring out a black character, mark them to be more important in the franchise than they are, and then have them pushed aside. It's not good. I'll say it straight up. You knew what to do with all these other people, but when it came to Kelly Marie Tran, when it came to John Boyega, you didn't know. That's what we were saying. And that was what I think people were misinterpreting as us having a problem with the fact that they were in the movie. No, that is not the case. I want good representation. I want representation that actually matters and isn't just paraded out like a purse puppy. And they don't do that. And they don't understand that if you do call out the establishment, if you do call out the media, if you do call out the people who pull the strings and call the shots, you know, those people, if you are coming in with a little bit new and unique and non-mainstream way to think, you're going to call every name under the sun. And I wonder how istinphobic Erica Jimenez here is going to, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, I don't mean any disrespect, is going is she really going to get called out here on this uh, article? Because she's talking about John Boyega's interview with GQ that we got a lot of the source from. She's talking about this. She says he's not a victim of racism. He was a victim of Disney's misguided attempt at feminism. Well, like, like I said, if he feels like he was a victim of, of racism from Disney, I am not somebody who's going to argue about that point with him. Absolutely not. I can't. I, I Obviously, I couldn't. Yesterday, John Boyega made headlines after he revealed an exclusive interview with GQ, British GQ, I believe, that he believes his Star Wars character was given a lackluster storyline because of the color of his skin. But they certainly used the fact of the color of his skin to market this film. And like, like we said from the previous article, that's a no-no. When you're using that sort of tokenism as a, look what we have. And, and I've done countless videos on this with Star Trek as well because they've included a non-binary and a transgendered character on the show, like actors to play these characters on the show. So they're acting and playing the exact same thing as they are. And hiring based on how you look on the outside actually is discriminatory, you know, to hire either based on ethnic group or it is a little bit discriminatory. And, and I get a lot of the time that people's hearts are in the right places, but their heads are up their own backside and they don't quite understand that, yes, you're still using these people as tokens. You're still using these people to just prove how not istinphobic you are to your other actual istinphobic buddies up in Hollywood in your big giant multi-million dollar offices and your little executive suites over at Disney and or Lucasfilm, etc. Boyega is angry about how Disney misled the fandom in general about his character Finn, a former stormtrooper who escapes to join the resistance. I would say to Disney is do not bring out a black character and then market them. And, and that's what he's talking about. And he talks about believing the same thing happened to Oscar Isaac, an American actor of Guatemalan descent who plays the Han Solo reminiscent character Poe Dameron. All right, now she continues. I do believe that Boyega and Isaac's characters were robbed of their plot lines and their glory. I do believe the trilogy set them up to be the main trio of the series and somewhere along that line that disappeared. The question here is, was it ra the racism as Boyega claims? Not quite, she states. I'm sure he's seen the second film, The Last Jedi, 
And that film makes it very clear why his character was effectively written out of the series. John Boyega believes he's a victim, victim of racism at Disney. He's not. He and the characters are victims of Disney's feminism agenda. It's an agenda that was willing to sacrifice the chance for a black Star Wars hero in favor of the series bland, empowered women. Oh, oh, I do agree with that. The, yes, focusing on this fake, empowered woman sort of trope, which basically it resorts to being an absolute Mary Sue, right? Basically, they are overpowered, over good at everything. They're handed the world without actually earning anything. And I do agree that that was a very bad choice. Now I'm starting to question. Now I'm starting to question. I mean, they did market these characters, Rose Tico and Finn, as, as sort of these representation sort of characters. And I, maybe they're both right. Maybe they're absolutely both right. What do you guys think? You can't stop me. I'm a Jedi from Jakku. You know, like little Mary Palpatine there who took everything from Luke Skywalker. She took his... X-Wing, his lightsaber, his friends. Heck, she even took his name and his house. Or at least what was left after, I guess, the stormtroopers burned it down 40 years ago. But hey, it's fair for Boyega to feel that his character was cheated. The first film clearly established a new hero trio, Ray, Finn, and Poe. It was set to follow the very formulaic style of the previous two trilogies, two men and a woman, who are the central characters of the film. Absolutely, the first major departure from the formula was making Ray a woman the central character of the trilogy. On its surface, this was probably a good choice for the series. It broke the formula just enough to be unique, but kept in the tradition of badass Star Wars ladies who had come before. Finn and Poe were clearly meant to be the other two members of the trio, although it was unclear who would play Rey's love interest. She, she really didn't even need to have one. I mean, if you were going to turn her into a Jedi like Luke, we didn't see the love interest on screen. Mara Jade came into the exp uh, ex extended universe. Expanded. I, can't, I was trying to say expanded and extended at the same time. In the originals, there's a love triangle between Leia, Luke, and Han, which thankfully resolves long before Luke and Leia discover that they're twins. It seems obvious that J.J. Abrams, who directed the first film, had planned to recreate a similar dynamic between Finn, Ray, and Poe. Well, it did kind of seem like Finn and Ray were going to hook up until the whole Ray and Twilight stuff sort of started sneaking in and took over. I think that maybe the whole Raylo thing didn't even come in until probably Last Jedi. I don't remember it being in Rise of Skywalker because I remember kind of Finn and Rey might, might hook up. I don't know. That would have been interesting too. Unfortunately, scheduling conflicts prevented Abrams from directing the second movie. I thought he didn't even want to. Whatever happened to, between Abrams and Ryan Johnson, the new director hired for the second film must have been disastrous. Well, it was the world's most expensive Twitter fight, is how it's described. I mean, you had the one undoing what the other one did, and then the other one trying to undo what the one did before to undo the other one's undoing. The Force Awakens may have been a bland and somewhat derivative rehash of a beloved series, but it was at least enjoyable. What happened with The Last Jedi, however, is a completely different story. I won't go into the generally terrible story writing or the magical force powers that are suddenly invented just for that film. The real underlying flaw in the film, of which bad writing and the magic powers are just byproducts, is the sudden desire to make Star Wars Galaxy of empowered women. Like, the entire thing. That's all they want. That's all they want. And I get kind of tired of sitting around just looking at women all the time. I mean, sometimes you want to see something else. Sometimes you want to see something that's not just some chick all the time. Sometimes you want to see, oh, I don't know, something else. Sometimes you want to see something a little bit more, hmm, a little bit more, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Just something that women like want to look at from time to time. I mean, it's fun to dress up and cosplay enough for, for a lot of the women who like Star Wars, but sometimes you want some eye candy for crying out loud. Sometimes you want something good, right? Ryan Johnson and the team at Disney clearly couldn't resist the siren song of feminism when writing this film. While the Star Wars series has always had powerful female characters, absolutely, this clearly wasn't enough for Johnson. The film's clear intention is to make all of the female characters strong and empowered. The best way to do this? Emasculate every male character and make their characters defunct and useless and let the ladies rule the day. 
Oh, there she is. Admiral Gender Studies right there. Vice Admiral Gender Studies with her, with her. See, now I have hair that's really bright, but that's because I always kind of was punk rock and a little, little goth. Not, not super goth, but goth enough. And I always wanted like the bright red hair, but they didn't make it like this without using Kool-Aid. So, and, and you had to bleach back in there. You can just like get developer. So, so I always went black because that was how I looked back in the day. This, the, this is more close to the, the punk rock stuff. I don't like that the SJWs have appropriated that, by the way. Every time a male character goes to save the day, they're either thwarted or undermined by one of the female characters. Oh, yeah. At the very beginning of the film, Poe saved us a day with his quick thinking. Princess Leia rewards his bravery by demoting him for subordination. <laughs> Insubordination is what it should be. Oh, do I need to pull up the proofreader thing? I probably do now. Where is it? It's in here. Proofread your shit! Insubordination. It's insubordination. Later, when Leia is almost killed during another Star Destroyer attack, Poe is passed up as the acting commander of the vessel, even though he is their head fighter pilot in favor of Queen of All Bureaucrats, Vice Admiral Holdo, who we've never seen and is wearing an odd ball gown for some reason. Apparently, Admiral Holdo's brave plan to escape the First Order is to slowly outrun them and then abandon ship. She has Poe removed from the command deck where she decides his solution to their dilemma is too manly and aggressive. Read Brave and Effective. Who wrote this? At this point, viewers are thinking to himself, perhaps Disney and Poe are dirty. Or better, they're setting him up for a redemption scene at the end of the movie. But Disney had no plans for any men to be allowed any agency or heroism in this story. The next character's manhood to hit the chopping block is Finn. Yes, he does. He gets wrapped up in a completely unnecessary and frankly irritating character named Rose, who is a mechanic on the ship. The writers then sideline Finn's character for a majority part of the film by sending him off on a mission that isn't going to work and is blatantly written into the plot to get Finn off the ship, effectively removing him from any position from which to play the hero. On the bizarre and unnecessary mission, Finn basically is useless. Rose spends most of the time lecturing him on the economic, economic exploitation. Wow, I can't even say it. Words we never thought we'd hear in a series set a thousand years ago. And they go on. And we, we've gone all this. Star Wars, Disney, Star Wars doesn't need Disney's feminism. Oh, yeah, I can I concur. It's insulting as a woman. It's insulting clearly to people like John Boyega, who is just... Absolutely giving no fucks about any of this. So tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. I am Mecha Random 42 and I'll see you guys on the next video, live stream or ever. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.